Okay, students. So right now, uh, we have to start how to solve quadratic equation by factorization method. Okay, there are uh, there are many method as such to solve the quadratic equation. One would be factorization method. One would be formula method. One uh, third one would be like you know completing the square method. But in your syllabus, there are only two method. One is factorization and second one is formula method so in this part of the video we'll just focus on the factorization method by the way we have already learned in the ninth standard how to split the middle terms of the trinomials isn't it it's just the continuation of that the same process let's say this is the sum 8x square plus 15 which equal to 27x students start writing right on the topic name the third topic this is a third topic how to solve quadratic equation by factorization method Start writing this question, 8x squared plus 15, which equal to 26, uh, 26x. Now get this 26 on the other side. Students remember that we'll have to get always the quad equation in this format of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, okay? Now plus minus can be varied it, with respect to that sign. So 8x squared minus 26x plus 15 is equal to zero. What is this? This is called as trinomial. This is called as trinomial. Now, how to split or how to factorize this trinomial in the standard nine we have already learned, isn't it? By using sum and product formula. Now, what is this sum? Sum is coefficient of x, which is minus 26. I hope you understood this. And then oh, what is the product? So what is the product? The product is this coefficient of x square into constant and multiply can I get the vote we're gonna get 8 into plus 15 will become plus 120. Now this product we will gonna split into the two parts at 20 into 6. Now 20 into 6 will become 120 but negative 20 and negative 6 will become positive 120 and the sum will also become negative 26. I have already taught this in standard 9 isn't it? So we'll have these two factors minus 20 and minus 6. So 8x squares, how we're going to split this minus 26x minus 20x minus 6x plus 15 is equal to 0. I hope you understood students. And now you'll have to make two groups. One, these first two terms and then last two terms. Now what can be taken out common from these two terms? From these two terms, we can take it out 4x common. So 4x if you'll remove out common. So what will going to happen in the bracket? 4, 2, 8 and x, x, x square. Isn't it? So 2x from first term and four words are 20 minus five and x x are one isn't it so 2x minus five has come inside the bracket now from the second this great uh, terms what can be taken out from it minus three can be taken out and then inside the bracket it would be three minus three into two x would be minus six x and minus three into negative five is going to be positive 50 which equals to 0 so that's how this 2x minus 5 has got as a common again and so if we'll take that out common 2x minus 5 what will be there inside the another bracket 4x minus 3 is equal to 0 in the second bracket and now using zero product rule now what is zero product rule guys zero product rule yeah like when the product of the two numbers is zero when either of the number has to be zero so when the product of these two numbers will going to be zero either 2x minus 5 would be 0 or 4x minus 3 would be 0. You understood why these two numbers are 0? Either of them has to 0 because the product of the two numbers is 0. Now, in the 9th standard, we used to stop over here because there was factorization question. But now, this year in that standard 10 will go ahead. So, 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. That means 2x is equal to 5. That means x is equal to 5 by 2. You got it? Or... 4x minus 3 is equal to 0 means 4x is equal to 3 or x is equal to 3 by 4. Now, some people write this with the answer 5 by 2 comma 3 by 4. This answer is this answer is considered as wrong answer. Okay, why? It is not wrong as such as a mathematically, but improper fractions are not valid in your final answer. So, students, karna kya padega? we'll have to convert this into either decimals or else a mixed fraction. So, it will become 2 and a half or else 2.5 comma these proper fractions are valid so three by four i hope you understood how to do this sum in case if you have finished that's nice if you have not finished please pause the video over here and finish this sum quickly in your book i hope you understood this this was our sum number one if you have finished this sum number one that's nice in case if you have any doubts or difficulties please ask me immediately 
let's do one more interesting question. X plus two upon X plus three is equal to two X minus three upon X minus three X minus seven. Now we'll have to solve these as a quad equation. So what is to be done student? Look at this, these are the fractions. So we'll have to just do cross multiplication. So X plus two into three X minus seven, which equal to two X minus three into X plus three. And now when we'll multiply these two, uh, two binomials and binomials on uh, each side, we're going to get these as an answer. X into 3x will become 3x squared minus 7x, then plus 6x, and then 2 into minus 7 will become minus 40, which equals to, similarly, you'll have to do this, uh, say, 2x into x, 2x squared, 2x into 3, 6x, minus 3 into x, minus 3x, minus 2 into plus 3, minus 9. I hope you understood, guys, still here. And then now what we will do, we'll have to just shift this 2x square on the other side. So 3x square minus 2x square will become x square. This will simplify to say minus x. And if we'll simplify this, you're going to get uh, plus 3x when you shift to other side of minus 3x, minus 14. And if we'll shift this minus 9 on the other side, it will become plus 9, which equals to 0. Isn't it simple? And now students, what we're going to do? We have to further simplify this. So x square, this will turn out as minus 4x. This will turn out as minus 5. I hope students have finished writing till here, which equals to 0. And now how are we going to crack this? Again, sum is the coefficient of x, which is negative 4. And the product is coefficient of x square and uh, this constant. So the product is negative 5. So what are the two factors of negative 5 whose sum will going to be minus 4 and the product will going to be minus 5? That's minus 5 into 1. So that's how we're going to split the middle term minus 4x as minus 5 and minus 1x. Okay. So x square minus 5x plus x negative 5 is equal to 0. Now again, we'll make two groups. One would be x square minus 5x and another would be x minus 5. So if you'll take it out x common, this will turn out to x minus 5. And from here, if we'll take it out one common, then it will become x minus 5. Now, here is one very big confusion. Many people keep thinking that, so what is the use of that plus 1? Do we have to take that plus 1 common outside? Yes, you'll have to take that plus 1 common because in the next step, there has to be one more uh, factor. Like x minus 5, you'll take it out common. And if you have not written this term, then you will not going to get this term as x plus 1. Are you understanding? So please don't think that array is basically could be common nahi hai, one to likhe, nahi likhe chalega. So don't do that. Guys. Okay, plus one write it down. So this this step becomes simple for everyone. So x plus one into x minus five is equal to zero. Oh, some people are saying, sir, we no one should this step. No problem, I'll explain to you all. X square minus five x. Eh? What is common in these two terms? Look at this. The upper x square, the upper five x. Eh? You can take it out x common. Now x into what will going to give you x square? Obviously x x into what will going to give you minus 5x obviously minus 5 so that's the reason inside the bracket x minus 5 now what is common in these two terms there is nothing common so we'll take it out plus 1 now plus 1 into what will you going to give you plus x that is plus x inside the bracket and plus 1 into what will going to give you negative 5 that is obviously negative 5 so that's how this step has come i hope you got the clarity now x minus 5 has been taken out common and x plus 1 in the another bracket which equals to 0 now, using zero product rule, either x plus 1 is equal to 0 or x minus 5 is equal to 0. Now, if x plus 1 is equal to 0, that means x is equal to minus 1. If you just shift this one term other side. And then this negative 5, when it will go to other side, it will become x is equal to 5. So, we got two roots, x is equal to negative 5 or x is equal to 5. So, the solution set will become inside the bracket negative 1 and 5. Now, read. Sometimes they give over here. Okay, here in the question, x belongs to whole number. So in that case, if it's a whole number, so if x belongs to whole number, then these answers will going to get rejected. You let me read the condition, guys. Are you understanding what I'm trying to explain to you? So in that case, x will become positive 5 only. That is the solution. I hope you understood in case of whole number. Otherwise, it's fine. Normal. You understood, guys? We'll have to read the condition, what kind of sum it is asked or what kind of question it is asked. Depend on that, we'll have to write your final answer. I hope you understood. Isn't it? This is very, very simple, guys. It's really, really simple, guys.
I know. So otherwise, don't cancel it. Uh, if there is no condition, that means there are two rules. But if there are condition, we'll have to choose the numbers very specifically as per that condition. I hope you enjoyed learning along with me. So see you in the next video with more such quadratic splitting middle terms. And in my next video also, I'm going to cover how to do that square root sums and how to do that some special types of factorization sums like the root ones. Okay. So they are very important guys. So stay connected. See you in the next video. Till then.